hey, you guys. Well, would you look at that? Ah, it's you. Welcome to Kids Church. Welcome to Kids Church Online. We're so glad you're here. So glad. Like really, really, really glad. I've got a question for you guys. Are you ready? Wait, ready for what? Ready to laugh? <laughs> ready to worship? <clears throat> me, 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 me. Ready to learn. About God and how much he loves you. Trust me, it's a lot. Ready for games? Hey, game time. Hey, game time. Ready for a joke? <laughs> you gotta wait to the end for that. Okay, it's time for Kids Church. Time for Kids Church. Kids Church! Here we go. What's up, Kids Church? Hey, welcome to our kid interview. Today, I have my friend Weston with us. Weston, tell everyone hi. Hi. All right, man. I'm excited to jump in and get to know you better today. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. First question, how old are you? When's your birthday and what grade are you in? I'm in first grade. My birthday's July 29th and I'm seven years old. Awesome, man. First, or second question, show us your favorite thing in your room. I actually have two favorite things. Okay, show them to me. So first there's this little cute, there's this little cute penguin. Awesome. Does he have a name? Yeah. What's his name? Finkster. Finkster, okay. And I also built um, a little city out of Legos. It's really cool. Wow. How and there's even a huge house with a satellite dish. <laughs> That's there's awesome. four houses in there. How long did it take you to build the, the house? The big one? Yeah. It probably took around three days. All right, Weston. Um, I know it might be a while to get older, but what would you like to do when you grow up? I'm probably like an art teacher or farmer. An art teacher or a farmer? Okay, tell me about that. The, um, why I want to be a farmer is because um, I went to the farm a f like a few days ago, or not a few days ago, but like a few weeks ago, and I was like picking a lot of vegetables and it was really fun, so that's one reason why I want to be the, a farmer. Dude, that's really cool. So what would you, what would you grow? I don't know, just a lot of fruits and vegetables. That's awesome. Uh, Weston, what are three words that would best describe you? Kind, silly, and creative. Yes, I love it. I love that God's made you that way. And I can definitely tell that you're creative because are those your uh, pictures of Pokemon that you've drawn behind you? I didn't draw them, but I colored them in. My cousin actually drew them, but oh, wow. I colored them in. That's awesome, those are really cool. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Probably teleportation. Okay. Tell me about it. Where would you go and where would you teleport? I don't know. I would just teleport like if I wanted to go to Costco, I'd, like teleport to Costco. <laughs> to Costco? What would like do you do you really like going to Costco? Yeah. Me too. Isn't Costco the best? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like fun to just walk around through the aisles and see what they have. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So you teleport to Costco. Where else would you teleport? I don't know, probably to like up the park or something. Okay, that's awesome. Well, Weston, this interview has gone by really quickly, but I wanna uh, ask you one last question. Weston, if you could encourage Kids Church with one thing, what would it be? Be kind to everybody. Yes, I love it. Be kind to everybody. Yes, that is such a good thing, and I hope that we can grow in being kind to one another. So thank you for that encouragement today. All right, Weston, we have one last thing to do. What is it? Game time. That's right. So help us count down. You ready? Three, two, one.
to our, our cooking show. show. Today I'm going to show you to make strawberry pie. Strawberry pie. Strawberry pie. I love it. I like strawberry pie. Set, go. First, we're going to put syrup in. Syrup. Eggs. Three eggs. Carefully put it in there. Flour. 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 Now we're going to put in strawberry babies. Big strawberries. Strawberry is supposed to be this big. Why you don't put big strawberries in? Okay, fine. <laughs> Put in some toast. Oh yeah, <laughs> toast. Yeah. <laughs> you are annoying me. This is the good part. See? Macaroni. Macaroni. Sugar. Sugar, sugar. A sugar, a sugar, a sugar. I'm um, get a spoon. Put it in. And then drop it and then stir it. And then that's how we make strawberry pie. Yep, it's all done. It have to warm up first. Oh yeah. How about we just put it in the oven then be done? That looks so good. It's my favorite. Mmm. Here, cat. In Kitsch Church, when we talk about kingdom, we use the word out. For us, that means that we participate in what God is doing here and around the world by reaching out with His love in word and deed. One of the ways we do that in Kitsch Church is by supporting kids from around the world. This is Welton. We have loved being his friend since 2015 when he was four. Welton lives in Brazil with his mother and brothers. His birthday is June 22nd. He is 10 years old. Welton helps his family by running errands. He likes playing soccer and other games. His favorite subjects at school are history, reading, and science. Welton also likes singing and playing with cars. When he grows up, his dream is to drive a big vehicle so that he can help his mom. When Jesus was asked, what is the most important commandment? This is what he said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Sponsoring these children is one of the ways that Kids Church has chosen to live out this instruction from Jesus. Our prayer will always be 
that through our gifts, each child will experience the love and compassion and care of God. Dear God, thank you for Welton and his family. Thank you for making him a good helper to his mom. Please help Welton stay safe during COVID. And please help him to know that you are always with him. Amen. For me a good you hold my future you're working all the time you're the mountain mover from sunrise to sunset till the sun comes back up again you're by my side you started a good work in me i know that you will complete it you will see
Hi, everyone. I am really looking forward to our time together and getting to talk some more about what it means to experience God and specifically what it might look like in each of our lives. Let me start by asking you guys a question. Have you ever gotten an invitation to a birthday party or another event? How'd that make you feel to be invited to go somewhere? Somewhere fun. Feels good, right? Now, how about this? How would you respond if you got an invitation saying, God invites you to be part of what he is doing? Wouldn't that be awesome to be a part of God's actions and his work in our world? How many of you guys have ever heard the phrase, when you are older? Has anyone ever been told that before? Now, when I was your age, that was definitely not my favorite thing to hear. But I've got some good news. Guess what? You don't have to wait until you're older to be a part of what God is doing. Today, we're going to learn about a boy God used in one of Jesus' miracles. As you listen to the Bible story, let's pretend to be detectives searching for clues. Your task is to discover the problem, the disciples' solution, and God's solution. You ready? I'm going to be reading from the book of John, chapter 6. For some time, Jesus had been teaching as well as healing people. This caused many people to follow him. Even when Jesus crossed to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, the people continued to follow him. Jesus and the disciples went up on a mountain and sat down. When Jesus looked up, he saw a large crowd of people coming toward him. Jesus asked Philip, where can we buy bread to feed these people? Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he asked Philip, this to test him. Okay, detectives, it's time to see if you've made your first discovery. Here's the question. What was the problem? Philip answered, several months of pay would not buy enough bread for all of these people to even have a small bite. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up saying, There's a boy here with his lunch of five barley loaves and two small fish, but that's not enough food for all of these people. Are you ready for the next question, detectives? What was the disciples' solution? Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down. About 5,000 men were in the crowd, and that's not even counting the women and children. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God, and began giving everyone pieces of it. Jesus gave the people as much as they wanted. Then he did the same thing with the fish. After the people finished eating, Jesus instructed the disciples, collect the leftovers, don't let anything be wasted. The disciples collected 12 baskets of leftovers. Okay, detectives, question three, what was God's solution? When the people saw what Jesus had done, they said to themselves, this man is the prophet we've been looking for. Jesus knew the people wanted to make him their king, so he left and he went to a mountain by himself. What an amazing story. Let's think through things that we've discovered so far in our detective work. And let me ask you one final question. What did you discover from the Bible story? You guys, how does it make you feel to know that God used a young boy's lunch to feed all of those people? What part did the boy play in this miracle? Did he multiply the bread and the fish for all the people to eat? <laughs> no, but what did he do? He brought what he had and was willing for Jesus to use his lunch to feed the people. Can you imagine what it must have been like when Jesus prayed and broke the bread and fed all of the people? Can you imagine what it must have felt like to be that boy watching the small lunch that he had be used by Jesus to feed thousands and thousands of people? It's amazing. Let's read a verse together. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 God has a plan for each of our lives. And what is that plan? It's to be a part of the things he is doing. 
And being a part of the things God is doing is going to look different for each one of us. God asks or invites each uniquely different one of us to join him. God wants us to be part of his work. Let's read that together. God wants me to be a part of his work. And before you start to worry that it might be too hard or scary or difficult, let me remind you that to be part of what God was doing, the boy in our Bible story just had to offer Jesus his lunch. I mean, how hard is that? Well, I guess it's a little harder if you're super hungry, but still, not too hard. If you aren't sure where to start, let me read a list of some things God may be inviting us to do. Pray for people to know about God. Tell people about God. Give to support missionaries and other church ministries. Continue to learn about God. Invite your friends to church. Tell people how they can know God and have a relationship with him. Obey your parents. Be willing to do whatever God asks you to do. Trust God to help you obey him. Keep God first in your life. That list doesn't feel too difficult, right? I mean, nothing that feels absolutely impossible. But let me ask you guys this. Does God ever ask us to do something impossible? It's a tough question. Okay. Was it possible for the young boy's lunch to feed over 5,000 people? It wasn't possible for the boy alone, was it? But the boy wasn't alone. He made what he had available to Jesus, and then Jesus did what was impossible for anyone besides Jesus to do. Here's the truth. Sometimes God may ask us to do something we think is impossible, but let me read something that the Bible says about that. That's because what God says will always come true. Luke 1, 37. What does this verse tell us about God? It tells us that if God says it or asks it, we don't have to worry. There's nothing that he can't do. So we trust him and we do what he asks us to do and we watch and see what he can do. This week, you guys, experience God by looking for what he's doing in your neighborhood, in your school, your family, at church or other places. Experience God by asking him to show you what you can do to be a part of his work and then join him. The young boy didn't have a lot. All he had was his lunch. Because he was willing to give his lunch to Jesus, over 5,000 people were fed. In just a minute, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to do a little challenge. We're going to go through the letters of the alphabet and see if we can think of something that we have that God can use to be a part of his work. Be creative. Think outside the box. It can be things you have, your personality, your abilities, your interests. Let's see if we can get all the way from A to Z. What do you have that God can use? Are you willing to give it to him? Can you imagine what God can do? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for wanting to have a friendship with us. Thank you that you don't just want us to know things about you, but you want us to know you and experience you. God, we know that you are working in our world, and we thank you that one of the ways that we can experience you is that we can be a part of that work with you. Help us to be willing to do what you ask us to do and to give what we have. We trust you, God, that you are always working for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go make that list. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's Kids Church family experience. I thought of this question the other day. What do librarians take with them when they go fishing? Bookworms. See y'all soon. <laughs>